Top five, top five, top five. So the topic of back with another video. I'm Strange Wang. He's Nate. Today we're doing top five slapstick comedy movies. If you're curious about one of our top five favorite comedies, I'm above his ugly ass head. Fuck you, man. But ugly ass head. How do how do our top five clothes work? <clears throat> so one of us will start with their five and four. The other person will do five and four. Three, two, three, two, and then we'll trade off number ones. We also have something called the Zemeckis rule, which just means if we both have the same film on our list, but one person has it two spots or higher, that person will call out Zemeckis and we'll save the conversation for that film when we get to it on their list. All right, so I'm going to get started with my number five. My number five is Hot Shots Part Duh. Duh. Big fan of 1980s action movies. This movie makes fun of those movies. Mm -hmm. I love Charlie Sheen, especially like young Charlie Sheen, before he started putting cigarettes up his nose and stuff like that on camera. And, like, before he got AIDS and Before he was too. winning? Yeah. Well, he's always been winning. but back, back when he was actually winning? Yeah. This movie just makes fun of all those movies. Mm -hmm. Not in a disrespectful way. In a funny way. Like, McGruber, I watched that movie, and it upsets me because it's <laughs> terrible. This is how it's supposed to be done. This is the right way to make a slapstick parody action movie. <laughs> Next on my list is one of the... Before I even knew what slapstick was, this was the first slapstick comedy I've probably ever seen. Home Alone. That's my number four. Dude, the whole ending is one mm -hmm. slapstick joke after another, mm -hmm. and it's incredible because this yeah. is what it does. It builds on the humor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't give you the funniest thing first. It lets you go on a ride. You went on this little hill, and then you went on one little bit bigger, mm -hmm. and it, it builds. Yeah. And it's hilarious, especially when you're a kid. Facts! <laughs> no, I got yelled at one time because me and my cousin stuck a bunch of marbles under a, a rug. And my mom, like, legit almost fell. <laughs> you a goddamn heathen! You a goddamn motherfucking heathen! And it was because of Home Alone. Yeah. Like, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Like, once, like, the actual home invasion starts, it is, like, slapstick joke after slapstick joke after slapstick joke. But because it's not the whole movie, that's why it's on number four. I'm assuming yeah. the same movie? Yeah. Okay. For sure. Uh, yeah. So, my number five is Robin Hood Men in Tights. <clears throat> All right, I have no problem admitting this is not Mel Brooks's best film, but it, I think it definitely has the most slapstick in it. Uh, and I personally love it because I watched it when I was like nine and it was funny. Um, the only funny thing in that movie is Dave Chappelle wearing a snapback. That is really, really funny. But I mean, like when you're nine years old and have no clue what sexuality is and there's a lady laying there in metal underwear, like, you know, you get yeah. kind of curious. So, but I think it's really, really funny. I Sorry, appreciate garbage. all the jokes. And it's like, this is like pure slapstick, man. Like, they're literally, like, their little stick fight on the bridge where they keep breaking the sticks and then just shrinking down into little tiny sticks is hilarious. Like, pretty much any time he has a bow and arrow in his hand, it's just something absolutely ridiculous. Especially, like, the Patriot missile arrow. Literally, the fourth wall break, where they <laughs> they're like wait, I think I get another shot. And then everyone in the whole film pulls out their script and is like, oh yeah, Robin gets another shot. And it's funny because it's also poking fun at like, just like stupid shoehorn plot devices in other films. Yeah. So he's literally saying, screw it. You want just a plot convenience? Here's your plot convenience. It's in the script. So that's freaking hilarious. My number three is The Jerk. A part of slapstick is just how outrageous everything is in the movie. I mean, you go to like Three Stooges type humor, mm -hmm. like off the, off the dome when you think of slapstick. Right! But like just the ridiculous scenarios you get in. And like as soon as you turn the movie on, he's like, I grew up a poor black kid. Steve Martin is white, if you don't <laughs> know. And he's the star of this film, and he said that. So like you automatically get like to like a ridiculous scenario because he thinks he's black because like he was adopted by a black family and didn't know he was white until he was like 25 <laughs> so like the whole thing's ridiculous and like he should get some shenanigans my favorite scene in the movie is somebody's trying to kill him with a sniper rifle and he's like adjusting these cans because he works at a gas station and he's like adjusting these oil cans and they shooting at him and he's like hey so and so I think these cans are defective <laughs> he's like they're not defective we gotta defect the person Oh my God, he hates these cans. Because <laughs> <laughs> the guy's a bad shot and he's hitting the cans instead of Steve Martin. <laughs> this incredible stuff. Steve Martin is one of the best slapstick guys yeah, ever. Yeah, I agree. Especially like later because like dudes just owned it because nobody else was in his class of yeah, doing it. So sure. the jerk is my number three. My number two was Duck Soup. Okay. Probably the most 
well-known Marx Brothers movie. But for me, those movies, for me personally, the best parts of those are the dialogue. And even though the dialogue is like very slick and dry mm-hmm. and kind of over the top, the gags in this movie is why it's my number five. Number two, I don't know how to count. Stupid. So like one of my favorite scenes in the movie that's very slapstick is Homeboy takes the other vendor's hat and he takes his hat. He's like, this doesn't my hat. And, like, they're going back and forth. He's trying to talk to the other guy, so he's distracted. And, like, dude's, like, cutting up his pockets and then like, cutting up his hat and stuff. And just, like, taking his lemonade to, to like, put in his popcorn. And, like, the dude get, is getting so angry. <laughs> and, like, he walks off. He doesn't even have his hat now. It's just, like, the slapstick in this is on a whole nother level when it comes to, like, physical comedy. So that's why it's on number five. You mean your number two? (laughs) So my number three, uh, back to Mel Brooks, is going to be Spaceballs. Like I said before, I think Robin Hood, Men in Tights has more slapstick gigs in it, but quantity isn't always quality, and Spaceballs hits every joke. Like, to me, every joke in Spaceballs hits. It's debatable! The slapstick element is absolutely hilarious. I mean, they're literally like, they jam the radar. But it, it's like literal jam. Like, he launched a giant can of jam yeah. at the radar, you know? Yeah. And, like, uh, we talked about this in another video, but when they're combing the desert, yeah. it just shows, like, these two groups of white guys using just these big combs, which is already a joke, and then it cuts to the two black guys using a pig with the black flower fish. Yeah. We ain't found shit. Number two is bringing up baby. That's my number one. Nice. Before there was Tiger King, before there was Hangover, <laughs> there was Bringing Up Baby. So the whole like film is this leopard mm-hmm. took Homeboy's bone and like buried it. That was a dog. There's a leopard, but a dog <laughs> took Homeboy's like dinosaur bone, buried it, and this man has to hang out with this chick he hates, despises, because like she keeps getting in his way and having amazing slapstick moments. Mm-hmm. And but he needs her to find the bone, and she needs him to help with the leopard, mm-hmm. aka baby. And it's just it, like it has rom com tones, which is a plus for me. But like the slapstick in this thing is incredible. Mm-hmm. Like she takes his golf balls, his <laughs> car, the the scene at the party, the bathroom, with the, with the, yeah, yeah, with the pocketbook. Oh and, yeah, and like yeah, yeah, she yeah. says, "Hold my purse," but. He ends up getting accused of stealing a purse, and that's not her purse. Incredible stuff. Very witty. Mm-hmm. And it's like, this could be an everyday situation, but when you put five or six on back to back to back, it becomes slapstick even more. Yeah. Because it's so funny. For sure. And, like, I want to be clear when I say this, because I, I do not want them to remake that movie. But, no. like, but I wish that they would take that tone and make more movies, like, in that yeah. vein. You know? Because, like... We watched the trailer with Miss Darby on the channel, and she just thought the trailer was hilarious. And, like, I think that I really think that we need a resurgence of that type of comedy. Like, the and closest like, thing I could come up to is, like, Fairly Brothers stuff. Like, you look at some, like, Kingpin or Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. Like, especially Kingpin, because it does have that romantic comedy moment. Right. But they don't have, like, the smartness of, of these films, you know? Oh, they're pretty smart. They aren't really smart, but, like, the characters aren't smart. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? True. And, like, because these are just, like, regular every... That could be, you know, one of us in that film that's just going through this hilarious situation. So I would love to see that come back. But, yeah, the fact that this is such, like... Like, the time period that this came, film came out, the first time I watched it, I was so surprised at how funny it was. Like, and, like, it does such a good job of blending, like, witty dialogue and slap, like and slapstick. It's so great. And that was your number one. So, yeah. my number one, speaking of the Fairly Brothers, is Dumb and Dumber. Of course it is. Yeah, it's, also, it's my favorite comedy of all time. I love this film to death. And uh, we just shot the other video, so I feel like I'm saying the same thing twice in a row. But, like... Like I said in our other video, which you should go watch, which the I was there for earlier, uh, Jim Carrey's roles, like so many of them were just like him being like normal people. Like I'm a cable guy. I'm a you know a, a, a pet detective isn't like a normal thing, but but you look at some like liar liar. Right. I'm a lawyer. I'm uh, I'm God now. Like uh, 
See, you're just you're you're not helping your point. I mean, you got the Irene movie, the one where he's me, like, myself, and Irene. Yeah, the yeah. one where he's like a five or three black kids. Yeah, like he has a normal job in that movie. He has a what? He has a normal job in that movie. Yeah, my, so my thing is, he has like regular jobs. Yeah, but he still said regular jobs, and then brought up he was God. Well, but he had a regular he job just... in that movie before he would turn it. He's like a a newscaster or something. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. So and like that's why the cookie crumbles. So you take all these like normal things, and then just like let Jim Carrey be the like wild version of that. But then in Dumb and Dumber, you just take his irreverent, goofy, idiot style comedy and make his character an irreverent, goofy idiot. And it works perfectly. And, like, Jeff Daniels feeds off him perfectly as well. And, like, I mean, his, like, dream sequence where he's having this, like, like, uh, freaking kung fu fight <laughs> with all of the restaurant workers and going through all of that. And then, like, gets woken up by, like, the headlights where her breasts are and realizes he's about to drive into a trailer. Like, stuff like that, man, are, are just so, like, they permeate this whole movie. And it's funny. Like... The other point you didn't bring up in the last video is, for me, who didn't see a lot of the series Jeff Daniel roles, mm -hmm. or any Jeff Daniel roles out of the series, I just assumed he was a comedy slapstick actor. Because he does it he's so, so good. good. Yeah. Right. And then, obviously, like, the toilet scene. I mean, if we're going to sit here and talk about Jeff stuff. Daniels, but... I mean, the like, toilet scene's all kind of... He has a picture of it in his bathroom. Yeah. The, the tongue scene, like, when his tongue gets stuck to the pole on the ski lift or whatever, and, like, the kids try to yank it off and, like... That's so funny, man. Yeah, you kid got a cup of warm water. I got a great story that uh, relates to that. I'll tell you off camera. <laughs> Did your tongue get stuck to something? No. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> oh, righty then. Tell us some of your favorite slapstick comedy and films down in the comment section below. Scroll back <laughs> up, hit the like button, share the video, and subscribe. One more thing. If there's an ad in the video, please click the ad. Help me. And if you do click that at the end of the video, I appreciate you.